I love yogurt and all. I really do. But I just can't stand strawberry. I really can't. Because it's, it's not the fact that I hate strawberries, but just they have those little clumps of the strawberries in there. And it's just kind of, you know, you're enjoying the yogurt and then you got that little clump and it's like, you know, just dampers your day. It's like you can't even move on with your life because I got these little tiny strawberry clumps. Why? Hey guys, what's up? NG's back again for another video. I, I was hungry, so I had to have my yogurt. It's actually some pretty good yogurt. If you guys are wondering what kind of yogurt this is, uh, it's called La Yogurt. I don't know if anyone's familiar with La Yogurt. They changed their design, but um, they make some pretty good flavors. I mean, they got all the standard stuff. So, uh, this one's strawberry banana fruit cup. Well, I don't really like this flavor. You know, it's the only one my mom bought. She bought like the 32 pack because she shops at Costco. Uh, I prefer the uh, guava one. Anyone have the guava? Guava, mango, those are good flavors. I like them. Bomb. So what I want to talk about today is um, every time I go through uh, my inbox, not necessarily the PMs that I get, I get a lot of videos that are sent to me, which I rarely even check. I just check them you see if there's something cool going on. And I would always receive... Um, videos of games that really um people say I don't really talk a lot about them people say oh you dedicate so much time to this game but you don't talk about this game so can you give us your thoughts on it so today I'm going to talk about three three upcoming video games well one of them was actually already released yesterday um just I'm going to give my thoughts about them I have not really played all of them I haven't played all of these games before so this isn't going to be like a first impression this is just generally going to be discussion talk um, so those three games, I'm not going to name them out, I'm just going to talk about them as we go along. Uh, the first game is Sonic Generations, and, um, I, I think I talked about this quite in excess on my blog TVs. I talk about a lot on blog TVs, my goodness. And, um, really, going into, uh, the idea of Sonic Generations, I actually thought that it was going to be just another Sonic game. Because when you look at the previous track record of Sonic games that have been released, like this generation especially, they have not been good for Sonic. I think Sega and Sonic Team have been trying to kill kill off the character, but just people keep buying the game, so that's why they keep bringing them out. And so the, obviously the quality of them has decreased exponentially. I mean, when you, you look at games like Sonic and the Secret Rings, Sonic 06, Sonic and the Black Knight, um, Sonic at least especially, you can really tell that there is an apparent uh, difference in quality in those games as opposed to like, let's say, Sonic Adventure 2, the original Sonic Adventure, the Sonic games on the DS, and just old school Sonic, you know, it's just, it's not there, the feeling isn't there. Um, and it wasn't until um, Sonic Colors was released on the Wii, I'm talking of course console based, where people started to open their eyes again and realize that, hey, this was a good Sonic game, because people already had that the notion that, you know, why should we care about Sonic because these games are going to suck. That notion was already established in a, a lot of gamers' heads because, look at the track record, it's not like judging one game based off the series, there's a good track record, especially this generation. Oh god, that word ties into the game, damn. <laughs> so, Sonic Colors was a good Sonic game, for all intents and purposes. I mean, I honestly, I pre the game, I went to it thinking it would be a bad game, and I played both the Nintendo DS and the 3D, and the, sorry, and the Wii version, I was pleasantly surprised at what I got. It was a great game. So going to Sonic Generations, everybody's like, hmm, could this be a good Sonic game? And from all of the gameplay that was released, all of the demos, all of the screenshots, the game looks phenomenal. It looks fantastic. Not even based off of a visual level, because the graphics are great. Um, just how much Sega and Sonic Team are putting effort into it, how much tender love and care, that sounded weird, but how much tender love and care, I said it again, um, is going into the project, and you can uh, you can see it because the whole idea of playing as current Sonic, 3D Sonic, and playing as 2D Sonic. I mean, that's been a problem for literally every every Sonic fan. It's like when you would talk to someone, they would always have a preference, no matter how unbiased they are. They either prefer 3D Sonic or they either prefer 2D Sonic. Even those people who say that they like both, they always have one preference. So. Sega listened to the fans for once, and they're actually making the best of both worlds. For the people who like 3D Sonic, you can play the 3D Sonic levels. For people who like 2D Sonic, you can play 2D Sonic levels. And it transitions so seamlessly. It's like the 3D levels to 2D. While they are different, they are still the main, um, it's still the same design, if you would say. 
Um, and that is something that is really cool. You know, I haven't looked up too, too many videos on it because I don't like looking up games. I mean, like, I remember how I always used to look up videos on, um, you know, just like upcoming hours of games and such. But then I realized that, like, once you get the game, it's like... You like it, but then you, you sort of lose interest in it because you know literally everything, every single thing about it. So when it comes to games that I am interested in getting, I don't want to look up too much. Maybe a trailer, every four trailers that are released, I'll look up. Maybe a gameplay video, every couple gameplay videos, I'll look up, but not like every single detail that is released. And that's what I'm doing with Sonic Generations, you know. I can already tell the game's going to be fantastic, but why spoil myself with watching like all the levels and all the boss fights, you know, it just makes no sense. Um, so I'm here to report that I will be picking up Sonic Generations um, when it is released actually. I, t I wasn't going to pick it up at the start, but seeing as how they recently announced the PC version, oh, PC fanboy, PC fanboy Neo, um, I realized it was more accessible to me because the price for the PC version is $30 because PC games are usually cheaper. So I'm going to be getting Sonic Generations on the PC, and uh, Brandon, you already know man, you already know with the... Nice full 1080p visuals. You got that DirectX 11 support. We got that eight times anti-aliasing. <laughs> it's probably not going to be DirectX 11, but you get the joke I'm trying to say. So I'm definitely pumped up for Sonic Generations when it releases November 1st or something. It's kind of shaky with the schedule, and it kind of sucks that we're not getting the um, full special edition like the Europeans are getting. I mean, it really pisses me off because that is some cool swag right there, and I'm not using swag in the overusing sense like Brandon would use, but um, it, it's a pretty cool limited edition. It, again, it's another one that we're gypped out of, but hey, Europe has been gypped out of a lot of stuff too, so I guess it kind of it kind of makes some sort of payback? I don't know if that'd be considered payback, but uh, yeah, I guess. The second game that we're going to talk about today is going to be Batman Arkham City. Uh, the game was just recently released yesterday, and um, one another one of my YouTubers sent me just another video just to talk about the game. Please, 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 I beg you. And I am, for the most part, don't know how long I'm going to talk about it, but yeah, humor me. Uh, Batman Arkham City. Well, if you've played the previous game in the new reboot of games for Batman, Batman Arkham Asylum, um, you ask anybody, and honestly, they will tell you that if there was a lowest score that they would give the game, it would be an 8.5, because everything about the game was perfect. It was an amazing game for all rights. I mean, Rocksteady Studios, they did a terrific job on the title. I mean, I've been playing through a lot of it on my PC. Let me see. It's like, uh, let's see. Dude, like Batman Arkham Song, Game of the Year Edition, I'm already cranked in like seven hours. And the sequel just looks like ten times better than Arkham Asylum. I mean, they're taking what they did in Arkham Asylum to a whole new level. They're giving you a bigger open environment. You've got a lot more combat options. Just everything about the game is just bigger. There's a lot more to do. And that's what I really like in a sequel. They take the original idea and they still keep the core integrity, but they branch off and they make it, you know what a sequel should be. That's what the Naughty Dog with Uncharted 2, that's what Valve did with Portal 2, and that's what I really think a good sequel is defined as, when they can still give you the original the original game, but they expand on it in such a way that you are feeling like you're getting a brand new, fresh experience. And uh, just everything about the game, it's like, what's not to love about it? I am going to be picking up the game on PC, of course. Yes, PC fanboy, PC fanboy, Neo, rub it in, rub it in, rub it in. Um, but the PC version got delayed till November 15th, but it doesn't really matter to me because I'm getting the PC version for $25 on Amazon. I've got some uh, credit that can be applied to the order, so I can wait till November 15th to pick up Arkham City on the PC in all its beauty. I, I, I gotta start trolling. I really have to start trolling. It's gonna be so much fun. But if you have picked it up on the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3, then, uh, Share your thoughts in the comments on what you think about the game, you know, is it everything you lived up for, and don't just start like, oh, Arkham City sucks, it's the worst game of the year, you know, just give some logic and some reason behind it, okay, just point it out there. And the final game we're going to talk about is Saints Row Taterd. <gasps> Taterd? Taterd? Why would you say Taterd? Nah, Saints Row the Third. Um, <laughs> need I say any more? Like, go Google, go YouTube. Go on IGN, 
go wherever you have to, look up a gameplay video. No, look up a screenshot of Saints Row the Third, and I think that game speaks for itself. That game is the definition, the pure bare bones definition of how fun a game should be. You just look at how crazy some of these melee moves are. You look at how crazy some of these costumes are. You look at how crazy the world is. Like how much, just how much, like, I am dumbfounded because the idea of a guy in a giant Neko cap, like a giant cat hat, beating off on a prostitute with a fucking purple dildo? What? The idea of people running around in chicken masks with axes and little babies? And the babies got fucking AKs? Wait, I don't even know how good the story is gonna be. Even if the story is fucking fail. Just that sort of experience, that all those crazy antics, it's like you're gonna be spending more time going like, what? You're gonna be like, did that really just happen? Did that walk by me? Did that just kill me? It's 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 like I think it's gonna be a game where it's gonna take you out of focusing on all of these uh, blah 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 ooh, collect these items uh, blah 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 KD ratio blah 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 team deathmatch blah 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 and just put you back into where gaming should have been. Gaming should always be about fun. It shouldn't be about stat tracking. It shouldn't be about your KD ratio. It shouldn't be about all those pointless things that really in the real world, it's not going to mean jack squat. But the experience that you get out of a game like Saints Row the Third, no matter how crazy that is, I think that's something you're going to generally experience and you're going to have a fun time playing. And the guys over at Volition know that for a fact. I think that's the devs names. I'm not too sure entirely. So Saints Row the Third is definitely on my list of games to pick up. I'm still kind of de debating if I should pick it up day one or not because there are a lot of games coming out. I mean already in November I got to pick up Uncharted 3 and Sonic Generations and then Batman Arkham City on the 15th and then I got Battlefield 3 next Tuesday. So I think Saints Row the Third is going to have to wait till Christmas and I am going to be picking up on the Xbox 360 because I have the second game on 360 and just me and my friend we're going to play co-op on that shit like no joke. So those are all the games that I uh, wanted to talk about you guys, Sonic Generations, Batman Arkham City, Saints Row the Third. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Real talk, you know, nothing fancy, nothing special, no scripted things. And um, I think this way I can generally get my thoughts out there uh, quicker, even though it was like 15 minutes or so. So post your comments below on what games you think look great out of the three I've mentioned, and uh, I guess I'll leave it here for now. For me to you for now. I'm in GS signing out, and like always, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.